Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are finally going to start about um, using GitHub. So we will use remote repositories with Git so that we can not only have our um, changes backed up locally on our PC, instead we can push them to GitHub so we can on the one hand um, basically sync them everywhere and on the other hand perfectly work together with other people because they can get those changes as well. And from Android Studio, this is super easy to do to share your project on GitHub. What you need to do is you need to press Ctrl, Alt and S to open your settings. Then you're going to go into that search field and type GitHub. And then uh, this page will open up and you can see I already added my GitHub account here. And you need to do the same. You need, you need to click on that plus icon here. And then basically enter your username on GitHub and your password press on login and then that account will be added. And from that point on, you can always really easy add your projects to your GitHub page. And after you've done that, you can just go to VCS. So I'm just in that project I created here with you in the series, but you can do that with any project after you set up your GitHub account in Android Studio. You just go to VCS here to import into version control and just click on share project on GitHub then you can see that we can choose a repository name for which I will just choose this project name here. We can check if that repository is a private repository. So only we can access it. We can access it from our GitHub account and not other people. So it's not public or we can just leave it public if we don't check this checkbox. And then we have an option to choose a remote, which I won't explain now, but you will understand that much better when we get to the command line part. Also in this video, we can choose a description here for that repository, which I'll just leave empty here. And after that, we can just click on share. Wait a moment. And there you go. Successfully shared project on GitHub. And if we now open up GitHub in our browser, here is my account. We click on repositories and then you can see here is our just pushed um, repository our git practice youtube we can click on that and you can see here is our source code that we had on our local machine and now it's publicly available in github all right so let's assume you now found a friend who wants to work with you together on that project here what your friend has to do now to get this repository to his local machine is he needs to Go to this GitHub page to where you just pushed your changes to GitHub. That's, by the way, called pushing. If you um, take your local changes and get them to a remote repository. So you push your changes to this repository and your friend now comes to this page, clicks on this code option here. And you can see here is a link that he will copy or you can just click on that button here. Then your friend will go into his Android Studio, click on File, New and project from version control. And here you can see it takes a URL in which we can just paste the URL we just copied. And if we then click on clone, so that process is now called cloning a repository. If you don't have a repository at all on your local machine and you want to get that repository from a remote repository to your local machine, then we say we clone that repository. So let's click on that and we see that this directory already exists. Okay, of course, because I created this project on this local machine, we can choose another folder name here, git practice YouTube 2, and click on clone again. And now you can see it is loading, it's downloading it. You can see you've checked out an Android Studio project. Would you like to open it? Yes, we want to open that. Let's open it in a new window. And there we go. Here is our cloned repository in which your friend can now work and add his own changes, push them to the remote re uh, repository and you can get his changes then again. So let's actually do that. Let's open up our main activity here and add a print line statement here or just a comment. I don't know, just print line. Hello from your friend then we commit that. So we click on that check mark. We commit the changes here. Hello from your friend commit. We add that main activity file, of course, and click on commit. 
All right, and after that commit, we now want to get those changes to GitHub. So this time we cannot use this VCS import into version control share project on GitHub option because our project is already on GitHub. So this option will create a new repository on GitHub, but we already have that repository. So we have to use something else. And I already said that the process of getting your local changes to GitHub or to any remote repository is called pushing. So what we need to do now is we need to push our changes. So we just made a commit that we want to push now and we go to VCS git and push or use this shortcut here. So if you now click on push, you can see we will push our master branch and these commits that are listed here, we only have one commit here, but these commits will be pushed to our remote repository on GitHub if we now click on push. So let's do that. Wait a moment. And you can see pushed one commit to origin master. So if we now take a look in our GitHub account here again on this Git practice YouTube page, go into our directories here to our main activity. Let's search that here, main activity. You can see now that print line statement, hello from your friend is included in our remote repository. But if we now go back to our first Android Studio instance, so our initial project, not from our friend, from us. So this git practice, which one is it? This is git practice YouTube 2. So that one we just cloned. We don't want that. Instead, we open the other one, just git practice YouTube, in which we just created that remote repository with that import into version control, share project on GitHub option here. But as you can see, this is also just a local repository here. And our friend just made some changes to the remote repository, which are not in this local repository yet. So what we need to do this time is not pushing our changes because we don't have any changes. Instead, we need to pull them. So we need to get the changes from the remote repository to our local repository. And we can do that with this little blue arrow here in the top right corner. You can see update project, let's click that. And you can see what it will do is it will get all the changes from the remote repository to our local machine and automatically merge them with our project. So if we just click OK here, then you can see it's fetching, updating, merging. And you can see here is the line hello from your friend. And of course, right now there aren't any merge conflicts which, which could happen here. If we also changed something here and our friend changed the same line, then you would need to resolve those merge conflicts. But right here we just added a print line statement. So there aren't any issues with that. And that is actually the most important concept you need to understand about Git. So every time we want to get a project, a remote repository project on our local machine, which we don't have yet on our local machine, then we clone that repository. After that, we have that repository. We can make some changes in that in its code. If we are done with our changes and everything is working, we want to get our changes to the remote repository. Then we first commit our changes and then push them. So we get our changes to the remote repository and everybody else who is working with us on that project can use this update function here in Android Studio or git pull, it is actually called to get our changes on their machine. So that was the part from within Android Studio. And as promised, I will also show you the command line option. And if you think you only use Android Studio and you don't need the command line, I really suggest you to also watch this part with the command line, because even if you just use it for Android Studio, then it will still give you a much deeper understanding of Git if you know how to use it from the command line and you're just much more flexible if you want to make some projects in future that are not in Android Studio, then you can always use Git from the command line. So will I make sure to watch the second part of this video too? I know this is going to be a long video, but it's super important to understand this concept of Git because this is probably the most important concept of Git that you can work with many other people on a remote repository. And because it's pretty unpractical to show you that from within Android Studio's terminal here, I will show you that from the Windows PowerShell, which is just another shell, which will do the same job for us. But I can show you the concepts of that remote stuff much easier from this command line, from this Windows PowerShell. 
And yeah, you can just choose your favorite shell for that. It doesn't really matter. So I created two folders here, one from Beth Jesus and one from Mark Zuckerberg. And those two guys now want to work together. So those are just empty folders here, as you can see, nothing in there. And in each of those folders, I just want to initialize an empty repository and then show you how we can do all that stuff from the command line. So if you're using Windows, you can just hold down Shift and right click into that folder. And then you can open the PowerShell window here, which will cause it to automatically navigate to that path you opened it from. And now we want to create an empty repository in BevJesus's folder. So we can first list our folders here with ls. You probably know that if you use Linux, but that is just a command to list all of the folders and the files inside of a directory. You can see we have our repo of BevJesus, which we want to open here. So we switch inside of that folder by writing cd for change directory. And then repo, we can press tab to autocomplete that press enter, you can see we are now inside of this folder. And here we can use our already known command git init to create an empty repository and link that with git. And now what we need to do is we need to add our remote repository here. So we can easily get our changes to that repository. But we don't have that remote repository yet. What we need to do is we need to go to our GitHub account. Um, let's visit our profile here go to repositories. And here we can create a new empty repository. So let's do that. Click on new, we can choose a repository name, I'll call it top secret, choose whatever you like, I'll leave it public and the description empty. We could initialize this with a readme file that just explains a little bit about that project. But I won't do that because it, this is just for demonstration here. We create that repository by clicking on that button. Wait a little moment and you can see now, of course, we don't have any files inside of this remote repository, but that is what we want to do here. We want to get our local files, our local changes to this empty repository. And the most important thing on this page is this link here. Make sure to have that HTTPS option selected and then copy that link here by pressing on that button. Then we can go into our shell again. And now we need to tell our git repository that we have locally here on our machine in the folder of Beth Jesus. And what we need to do here is we need to add this remote repository to this local repository. And to do that, we use git remote add. Now we need to choose a name for that remote repository. And here we choose origin. So that is what I didn't want to explain you in Android Studio. That is just basically the, the standard name for a remote repository. So we don't need to um, paste the link all the time. Instead, we can just type origin. And after origin, we need to insert the link once. So we link the name origin with this remote repository link here. Now we can press enter. And you can see it didn't throw us any errors. That means it worked. So now let's imagine we were with Jesus and we want to get some changes to this remote repository. So let's first actually create a file for that because if we don't have a file, we cannot commit anything and push it to that remote repository. We can easily do that from the command line by using the echo command, which will just write a string inside of a text file. So echo Mark Zuckerberg, you suck. Let's write that into a text file with that arrow and just call it suck.txt. Press enter. If we now press ls again, then you can see we now created a file suck.txt. And we now want to get that file to our remote repository. So what we will do is we will first add this file. So git add dot to add everything in this folder, which is just the shortest way then we commit that. So git commit minus m to choose a message for that. You already know that. Um, suck commit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Press enter here. We committed that. And now what we can do is we can push those changes to our remote repository by choose, uh, by writing git push. And the first time we push something, we need to specify the name of the remote repository. So git push origin. 
So this time we don't need to um, paste the link here instead of origin. So we can just write origin, press enter, and you can see we get an error here. The current branch master has no upstream branch to push the current branch and set the remote as upstream. Use this command, which we will copy here. So every time you push something the first time to a remote repository, this error will occur. And then you just need to um, use this set upstream option here. So you just copy that command, paste it here, press enter. And then wait a little moment. You can see Git is pushing that to GitHub. And after that, it should be done. So if we now switch back to our browser in GitHub and reload this page, then you can see here is our suck.txt file. If we open that, Mark Zuckerberg you suck. And yeah, it basically worked. So now what we want to do is we want to go inside of Mark Zuckerberg's repository, get those changes here to his local machine, and then edit them because he thinks he doesn't suck, and then push them again to this remote repository. and in Beth Jesus's repository, we will pull them again. So you just encounter that flow once with that pushing and pulling. So back to the command line. Let's clear that and move back one folder with cd dot dot, which will just well move back one folder. And here you can see we have our repository of Mark Zuckerberg in which we want to get the changes now that Beth Jesus made. So we navigate to that. What we could do now is, of course, we could use git clone and paste the link of this repository here. So if we go to top secret, we could get the link here. That would work, but that would also create a new folder. So I won't do that. Instead, what I will do is I will navigate to repo of Mark Zuckerberg here, press enter and initialize an empty repository here in which we again have to add that remote repository because that is now another local repository. Don't confuse that with the repository of Beth Jesus. That is a different one. So what we want to do here is we want to write git remote at origin. And I don't know if I copied the link. Let's paste this. No, this is the old stuff. So let's go back to the browser. Click on this code here. Copy that link. Go back to the command line paste that link here, press enter, then we edit that as a remote repository. And now because we didn't choose the clone option, so we didn't use git clone here, which would on the one hand create an empty repository and then get the changes from the remote repository to our local machine. We didn't use that, which you should normally do, of course, but just to show you how we can do that with an existing folder, we just created an empty repository here added that as a remote repository. So our GitHub repository here. And now we can get the changes with git pull origin. So press enter. And you can see it does some stuff here. But what you can also see is that it didn't work because we didn't specify a branch. So we explicitly need to specify a branch the first time we pull something. So the branch we want to pull here, and that is just the master branch in this case. So we try that again with git pull origin master. Press enter again. And you can see now it doesn't give us that error. So let's actually clear that up here. If you now type ls, then you can see inside of our Mark Zuckerberg repository, we now have that suck.txt file. And we could get its contents with cut um, suck.txt. You can see Mark Zuckerberg now sees Mark Zuckerberg use suck and he says, no, I don't suck. Let's change that line by writing um, echo again. So echo, no, you suck, Beth, and write that into that file. So into suck.txt. And now we can add that file. We can commit it with a commit message. Beth, you suck. Commit that and push that again with git push origin because that is the first time we push something. We need to specify that origin. Press enter. And you can see we get that error again. So we need to use this command here instead. Copy that, paste it, press enter. Wait a little moment and you can see it's pushing it to our GitHub repository. And of course, that could now go on forever. So if we navigate back to our 
um, folder where we can navigate to the folder of Bev Jesus. So repository of Bev Jesus. In here, we can now type git pull. So this time we don't need to specify the origin because we already pulled something in this repository. Just press enter and you can see we got the changes from Mark Zuckerberg. We can um, get the contents of this suck.txt file and you can see now Bev can see no, you suck Bev. And I'll leave it up to you to continue this highly intellectual conversation between those two guys here. And I hope you understood all the concepts I showed you in this video because, again, that is super important that you understand that, especially if you want to get a job as an Android developer because everywhere in basically every software development company, they use Git or at least some kind of version control and the concept of that is everywhere the same. And if this was the first video you watched from me or you are not a subscriber yet, so then really make sure to click this subscribe button. It's just a single click and you will learn a lot on my channel about Android development. You will get videos every second day as usual. And yes, you will get a lot of value. You won't regret subscribing to my channel. Have a nice day, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye bye.